Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. How are you? You will start at 7. Till that time, you can download the practice files. I have shared it on the WhatsApp group. And let me paste the link here itself. Sorry. So what most of you are doing is that when you refresh, it is not showing the updated rows. So you will go to pivot table analyze. Here you have an option of change data source. Click on change and then it will select the data which is currently taken inside the pivot and then you will reconnect with the new data set. Click OK. And then it shows 27 rows of your data set. Now, this is not a simple way, correct? You will keep on adding data every day, maybe every week, every month. And every time if you have to do it, it is not user friendly. Okay. So let me delete this. Let me delete this sheet also. Okay. So what I need to do is before creating pivots, before starting with the first step itself, you need to go for creating tables. And how do you create tables? So what is a table? This area is nothing but a normal range. Okay, You have to mention like A1 till G28. Okay, You can click on insert and then click on table and click OK. Now, there's a difference. Little bit of formatting you might have seen, but there's another difference. What is the difference? This area you can call as table design. That's the new feature which is added after inserting tables, table three. This area can be named as table three. Do you know what is the benefit of inserting a table? Now, if I paste, let's say one more or two more lines, When I go at the bottom, when I paste it, 
When I click on these new lines, they are also part of the same table. Okay. They are also part of the same table. So whenever you will add new data set, it will always be called table three. The whole data set will be called table three. Okay. So that's simple, like brief about tables. So how do you insert tables? You need to select your data like this, or you can be there in any one cell and then go to insert and click on tables. So this is the one change which you need to do before starting with pivot table set cell. Okay, so this I have already done in my current sheet. So I will delete this sheet. Let us come back to our original sheet. So what is the name of this table? If you go to table design on the top, this is known as table one. That means whatever is my data set A1 until column M and until the last row, that is 79,918th row. All this is known as table one. And what is the benefit? Now let's start with our pivot tables. Okay. So when I'm creating a pivot table, you don't need to select any data sets, just be there in any one cell inside the table. When I click on insert, you see table is disabled because it is already a table. Now I will go for pivot table and look at the way it is picking the data. It is picking table one, the name of the table. It is not saying row number, so cell A1, then up to column N, row number 79,918th row, okay? Because that was definite data set. Table one, we have seen that whenever we paste something at the bottom of the table one, it automatically comes inside table one, table two, or whatever is that table, okay? So our pivot is based on table one. That means our pivot table will always be dynamic. As soon as we refresh after pasting the data at the bottom, it will automatically pick up the new data set. Okay, so this is clear with everyone. Table, you need to insert before creating the pivot table. Okay, and that's that will save a lot of time whenever you are updating your data set next time. Okay, now, how does pivot table help? So let's say someone is asking a simple question. How much is the total sales from this business, or this organization? So you will take column C, that is sales column. And then here at the bottom, you can see 165 million or 16.5 crore is the total sale. Now your boss can say, that's fine. Total is fine. I, I am aware of total, but can you show me the sales for India as a country? So I need to go to filters and I will select India, click OK, and then I will click on this column again and look at the bottom, that is 76 million. So that's how you will answer these questions if you are not using pivot table. Now, if you are inside pivots, so whenever we insert a pivot, this looks like this, okay? Pivot is having a name, pivot table two, because we already created one pivot earlier for practice. That's why this one is named as pivot table two. This name can be changed. How will you change it? You can change it by going into pivot table analyze. Okay. Those who are having 2013 or earlier versions, you might see options or pivot table options, but it is the same menu. Okay. And on the left side, you will see the name of the pivot. Here you can change it to something like, okay, sales report. And always avoid the space in between because many times it is not allowed. Okay. So this is how you will name. Now, let us put some data set into the pivot. So what do we have is, we have this field list and this field list is coming from the same data set. So invoice number, invoice date, sale, cost, customer. Same way invoice number, invoice date, sale, cost, customer. All the columns of your data set are shown in the pivot field list. Okay. And then you have these four boxes, these four sections where you will drag your fields and you will see some action on this side. So like if I'm looking for country-wise sales, okay. 
country I need to bring here and it will show me the unique list of countries. Sales. I will go and pick up sales column and bring it into values and it will add them and it will show me total 165 million. Okay. So that's how you will create a pivot table. Let me open the chat box. And you can start with your questions. So everyone is clear about how to create a pivot table. Normally, you are creating pivot by just going into insert and then pivot table. Now you need to change your method. You need to first create a table. You can go to insert from your data set and then click on the table first. And after that, go for the pivot table. Okay. Clear, 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 very good. How can I get the sample sheets? Please check your WhatsApp group. Okay. Fine. Request you to zoom Excel, that would be clearly visible. So I can zoom this spreadsheet part, that's fine. I think the menu related part, sometimes it's not in my hand properly, okay? Please show also comparison between two sheets for data, okay? Whatever comes under pivot sites, we will focus on that first and then we will think of other things, okay? So I think everything is fine with everyone. So let's start with next question, okay? So this is pivot field. Whenever you are inside pivot, it is visible. Whenever you are outside pivot, it is not visible. Sometimes when we have other things on the screen, you close it to see other elements on the page or the sheet. Okay. But then how to bring it back? So what you need to do is right click and here show field list. It will enable the field list again. Okay. Now, <clears throat> So our first question was country-wise sales. So here we have a list of questions which we need to answer during, during this workshop. And we will learn many things through these questions. So first question was total sales by country. Total sales country we dragged into row. So countries are visible in rows and sales in value. And they are summarized here. So any numeric field will come into value section. Whenever you want to take total of something, which is numeric field, it will go into value section, okay? Country can go into columns also. How it will appear? If you want to show your countries in columns, this is how it will appear, okay? So wherever you want to place it, pivot will also respond same way. Now, what is our next question? Our next question is, what is the contribution of each country in the total percentage contribution? Okay. So before going into the contribution and other things, let us first make it more readable because currently a person can take more time to read the numbers. So India is doing uh, 76 crore or 7.6 crore or 76 lakhs. Okay. You need to spend some more seconds. So how to make it better? Now here also there is one change which you need to do. So most of the people, how they are changing the format, how they are inserting comma, they are inserting comma by selecting cells and then they click on this comma separator. Agreed? That's how you do? Stop them. Because what you just did in this manner is that you have selected seven cells, okay? And then you formatted those seven cells. I will undo that. Why? that method is not appropriate because today it is country. If I remove country and if I bring, let's say city, now I'm having maybe 18 cells or 16 cells. So in the previous method, you just formatted only seven rows or seven cells. What will happen to these cells? Because these were not formatted by you and pivots are dynamic. Whatever you drag and drop, accordingly they behave, okay? So you need to, you need to format the numbers in a different way. And how? Let me show you. So I will right click any one number and then format cells. This is what you were doing earlier. We will not do that. Next option is number format. Number format means whatever field is getting used, the sales field, that we will format. And how to format it? 
click on number format. Then this is the formatting dialog box. Let's say we go to custom and we select this option. Anything we, you can choose, currency, accounting, numbers, anything, whichever you want, okay? Once that is done, click OK. I started from one cell, but it is implemented everywhere. It is implemented everywhere. I formatted only one cell. So how did I format? I will repeat it once more because this needs to be changed in your habits. Okay. Right click any one number. Don't go for format cells. You need to go for number formats. And then the menu is same. Whatever you want, just click that. And then accordingly, that will be implemented in the full column. So I want this one, which brings me comma formatting. Okay. So that's the second change which you need to do while creating the pivots. Now, we will come back to our country-wise sales. And again, you can take something out. It will go away from pivots. You can bring something again, and that's it. Or you can take this toward the field list. Then also it will be taken out from the pivot table. You can check this also. Okay. Now, our question was, which country contributes how much to the total business in terms of percentage? How will you do? Many people will take this number. Let's say for India, we want to calculate. They will take this India number. And then we will see some complex linking divided by total number. And it shows 46. Let's change the form formatting into percentages. And that's correct. But when I try to do or drag it for other rows, it is remaining same. Okay. So this is not correct way of doing this thing. Okay. Some of you may be aware of this feature, but let me show you how to do it. So if you want to show whatever is the percentage contribution of each country in the total sales of the business, you need to take any one cell, numeric cell, right click, and then go for show values as this option, show values as, and then go for percentage of grand total. And you will see 46%, the one which we calculated manually is auto-generated within pivot tables. Okay, I will undo this and do it once more so you can practice again with me. Okay, what I did, whatever numbers were there, right click, show values as, and then I will select percentage of grand totals. Okay. Now, let's see what's happening in the chat box. Yeah. Chat box is open. You can ask anything, whatever we have covered till now. Not clear. Recording will help later. We are beginners. Okay. Again, recording later questions I will not entertain during the workshop. What if I want to see both columns? Ketan, glad you asked this. Okay. But values are replaced again. Same thing. Okay. So I will undo this. Okay. Numbers are very important. Your boss says percentage is fine, but numbers were base. They are more important than percentage. Okay. I want to see both. No problem. The good part about this value section is that you can bring the same field one more time. And then whatever we apply it, we will apply it on the second one. So right click, show values as, and this is what we selected. And now we have both the things. Carry. Okay. Mahesh, uh, is it possible to sort values? Yes, you can select any cell, right click, and then sort smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Let's go for highest to lowest. So sorting is possible based on the number. Okay, so we have sales and we have percentages in two different columns. And now you may be thinking that these names are not looking great, okay? Because it was sales. So when you bring it here, the value section will do some, some, some kind of summarization. So it adds some. So what you can do, you can type your names directly in the cell and pivot will allow. You can again type here percentage share 
and it will be accepted by pivot. There is only one condition from pivot table. And what is that condition? The condition is that you cannot type something which is already there in this field list. Like if I try to type sale, it will not allow. You have to make it a little bit different. Okay. So that's how you can rename the fields. So I will escape it and bring it back to sales. So we have covered two questions from here. Total sales by country, that was easy. Percentage contribution of each country in total, that's also done without any formulas. Now, sales by country and channel. So we are having a channel. Channel is nothing but customer type. Okay, you remember four type of customers were there. Groceries, hypermarkets, supermarkets. So how we need one more pivot table and there we need to create country wise and the customer type wise your sales. Okay, so how to create a new pivot table? How to create a second pivot table? Anyone? How to create a second pivot table? We'll go to data. Insert. Now Manoj, Kajal, Mohit, they are saying that you can copy paste the existing pivot table and that's correct. You don't need to start fresh from this. You can take this pivot. Make sure that you select the full pivot, okay? Otherwise, this will not work. And then you can leave some empty space in between. Okay, why empty space? In case you want to add something to the first pivot table, it needs space, right? That's fine. Then let me reduce this. And percentage share, I'm not interested. So I will uncheck this. And so country by sales are there. I just need to add customer types. So where should I add customer type? Okay. So let me show you. So if I add customer type here, my report will be shown like this. Country and then four customer types. And this sale number, total of country is broken down into four customer types. Okay. UA, same thing happening again. Now you can change it also. You can say customer type, I want to keep it in columns. And this is how it will look, which is more readable because it is short. Okay. It is not vertically very long. Okay. So this may be a better scenario, maybe. Or you can reverse the field. I want countries here but I want customer type here. So according to pivot will change. Let's say if we put both the things into rows, what happens? Can we change this look and feel? Okay, so one thing is that this is known as compact format because this is, it is taking less space. One is this, second field is this, both of them are in same column. So it is known as compact format, okay? Now this compact format is, you can change it if you want that these two columns should be in two different columns. You can go to design and then here you have report layout. Currently this one is active. You can go for tabular one and you can see now it is showing in two different columns. Country and the customer type, they are in two different columns and sales is still there. Then we also have subtotals. We can decide not to show them. We can decide not to show grand totals also. Or you have some other options where to show at the top or bottom of the group. It depends on the structure, whether everything is applicable in that structure or not. Let's say I want to show at the bottom of the group. Grand totals also I want for both. And that's how I can change the layout of the pivot table. When multiple fields are there, in the row section or column section. And I can easily change the style of this pivot also. So currently, let's say I want to implement this one. That's it. No need to manually go and change each cell to its different color. Okay, you can make use of these different styles and immediately as you click, it will be implemented. Now, what we need to do is let's come back to our original situation, compact layout. This is what we were having. 
Let me bring customer type into this section because that is more readable. It is quite compact. Okay. And I think we have answered our question that how much is the sale by country and channels. And we have also discussed all the layouts where to make that tweak in terms of look and feel when multiple fields are there. All the fields into row section, all the fields into column section, or we can swap them. Okay. So that's about the layout. Now, next question is percentage share of each country in a particular channel. Look at this. Percentage share of each country, so these are the countries in a particular channel. So what this question means is, okay, what this question means is, if supermarket total is 111 billion, okay, how much is this 43 out of that total? So we want to see the share of a country into the total of that channel of that customer type. So we cannot do right click, show values as percentage of grand total. That would be incorrect. What we need to do is right click, show values as, and we need to show it percentage of column total, not grand total, column total. Grand total means 165. You will divide it by 165 million. Column total means you will divide it by 111, okay, like that. So when I click on this, now this is 100% and UAE or India, they are contributing these many percentages in this two. Okay, I will repeat this once more. If you want to know which country contributes highest to supermarket in terms of percentage and what is that percentage, you can right click any cell, show values as, and then percentage of column total. And that will answer our third or fourth question. Now, let me change this question. Let's say you are a country manager. You are belonging to India, let's say. You are responsible for India. And you want to know, okay, how much is the percentage contribution of hypermarket customers toward India sales? So then what we need is 80 million divided by 76 million. That is what we need, right? 80 million divided by 76 million. And then you just need to right click any cell, not necessarily that cell, show values as, and then percentage of row total, because we need to divide it by these numbers. So row total. Now this becomes 100. And for India, hypermarket is 24% of its sales. Okay. Chat is open. Somia, excellent. Thank you, Somia. Anything till now? Okay. In the last section, whatever we covered, any questions? Keep both numbers and percentages. Again, you can bring sales one more time and change one of them into the other way. Okay. Just to show you sales one more time. So everything is coming twice, sales and one more time sales. So maybe this one I want to change as percentage. And then right click that second one and show values as whichever way you want to calculate it. Okay, so both of them will be visible to you. It's the same logic what we applied in the first one. Awesome things to learn, excellent sources. It just, it just paste a table, okay. I'm not sure what you're saying. It is very difficult for me to listen. Prashant, I'm not sure what's wrong. I hope everyone is okay with the voice. Great. Great, great. Okay, let's move to the next question. We have a lot of lot to cover, okay? Now, show only top five sales executives and how much is the total sale contributed by them, okay? So I will take this pivot. I will paste it nearby. Now we have the third pivot table. I'm not looking for country. I'm not looking for customer types. I'm looking for salesman, right? 
So sales executives or salesmen that field is there, I can bring it into auto section. And this is the total sales for each salesman. Okay. So like Carol is doing 7,800. Okay. Bilal is doing 1.5 million and like that. Now, what was the question? What is the total sale of top five salesmen? So first of all, who are top five? Okay, so you can sort it, right click, sort, and largest to smallest. If you want to see the lowest salesman or low performing salesman, smallest to largest. Okay, so sorting will help you to know those people. Now, the question was, how much is the total of top five people? So the answer which we are looking at, Rajkumar is leading by 12 million sales. So if we add these five, okay, if we add these five, our total number is 50.4 million. Okay, that's what we are looking for. But the problem is your manager says that I am not interested in all these people. Okay, I'm not interested in all these people. So just show me these five and their total sales. So how to do that? You can go there into this filter against row labels. Okay. Then you can select manually from here also if you are aware of those five names, but that will be difficult. What you can do instead is value filter. And here, last option is top 10. This top and 10, you can change. Top, you can change to bottom. 10, you can change to five. Items is nothing but a generic number or generic name for whatever is there in row section. Okay. So top five items by sales. That means top five salesmen by sales. Click OK. And now it shows only top five. So that clutter of remaining salesmen who were not best is gone. So that's how you will show top five salesmen. I will repeat it once more. Undo. Whether it is sorted or not sorted, that doesn't matter, okay? Even if it was not sorted, let me undo it. Nothing is sorted, okay? I will go there, value filter, top 10, top five only, click okay. Number is same, it's just that their order is different. And you can later on also, you can sort it if that's important to you. Sort, highest to lowest. So that's how we can get top five products, top five customers, top five salesmen, anything, whatever top and whatever you are interested, you can find those things. Okay, clear? Now, what if your boss says, okay, can you, can you show me sales or this report in such a way that top five are there, and then all others are what we call others. All the other salesmen, we can name it as others. Okay, I want to see it in that way. Because when I show top five, 50 is fine. But I would like to see how much others are contributing out of my sales team. Okay, so for that, what I will do, I will first sort it so that I can be focusing on these five people. Okay. And then these are the remaining ones, which I'm not interested in seeing individually. So what you can do is I will select it until the last person. Okay. So from sixth person until the last person, I have selected all of them. Okay. Then I am right clicking. And then I will click on group. When I click on group, it says group one. It has clubbed all those names which I have selected into group one. And I can easily type others for that name. Group one, I can change to others. Now what Pivot has done is Pivot has created one more field. Okay, you can see here in the row section, earlier it was salesman, now it is having salesman two also. That is the new grouping we, which we just did. And I can take this salesman out, the original one, 
and I'm left with those five people who are giving me 50 million. And I'm also having the other section who is like, which is 115 million. So I'm not losing the visibility, how much others contribute, although they are not individually great, but in total, that is very big number. Okay. So that's how we will do it. How was this? Chat box is open. So we have just grouped all the remaining salesmen into others so that our report is clear because the report should be in such a way that uh, it should be easy to read. When we are showing all the 68 salesmen, your manager needs to scroll, scroll, scroll. Okay, you can show top five, but then that's half the information. Okay, so I will repeat this once more because some of you are saying uh, this. Jay, we will come to that. Okay, just wait. Okay, please group, revise the grouping part. No problem, I will revise. Okay. Okay, so this was this earlier scenario and you can see in the field list, there's no salesman too. Okay, so I'm having the full list, but to select my other salesman, what I did, I sorted them top to bottom so that I can select them just easily. Okay, otherwise it will be difficult for me to select all of them, right? So I've selected all of them after sorting, selected, then I will right click that selection I will click on group and that's it. The group is created and then you can rename that group into others or outside top 10, something like that. Okay, something like that. You can name anything. And if you want that, that's fine, but we can remove the original number. Okay. A top 10, I forgot to change it to five. Actually it is top five, outside top five. Okay. And then you can sort this also, whichever way you want, if needed, that's fine. Otherwise it's okay. Okay. So now next one, how much is year till date sales? Okay. How much is year till date sales? So what is year till date? It's simply starting from first day of the year until today or whichever year we are focusing, whichever month or date we are focusing. Up to that date, the cumulative total of the sales. Okay. So I will take this. Any first pivot table, let's go with that. And I will go for new sheet. Let me name it as uh, trends, something like that, because it will be all related to the months and I will paste my pivot here. Okay, so I am taking this share out. Country-wise sales is fine. Sales numbers, which I was looking for. And you might also realize that whenever we are copy pasting, it is important because whatever formatting you have done, that is maintained. So never create the new pivot table because then you might have to rework on some of the basic things which are already done in the older pivot tables. Okay. So I'm looking for yearly sales or monthly sales. So there's only one field here which is related to date that is invoice date. So I will take this country out. I will bring invoice date. And what happens is in the newer version of Excel from 2016 version onwards, the date will be automatically grouped to 2021 or 2022. When you expand this, you can see quarter one. When you expand that further, Jan. When you expand that further, each day of that particular month. So this is how it is grouped automatically. It is a date field. If you look here, it is a date field. But pivot is automatically grouping them just for better readability. But what if you want your report by date? Like uh, two days back, one of my old colleagues, like he's at a CFO level, okay? He joined a new organization and he was asking, uh, Akhilesh, uh, I have a pivot table, and but whenever I want day by, sale, day by day sales, it is not coming like that. It is showing me year, quarter, center. okay? So 
what I told him was just one second job. Right click and ungroup. Pivot is grouping for you, but maybe you don't want that grouping. So you can ungroup also. Okay. So this is what I told him. And then he was like, oh, this was only one second job. But he was worried, like he was constantly messaging me and I was in another meeting and like, then he finally called me. Okay. So what is the learning here? The learning is depending on your Excel version, 2013, if it is 2013 or earlier versions, you will see your report like this by default or the previous one. But both can be switched to each other. If you want this one to be converted into your years, quarters and month, you just need to right click and then go for grouping and then select the mode of grouping months. Let's say I want to have year and I want to have months. These are the two groupings which I need out of this date. When I click OK, it shows me grouping at that level. So you can use the inbuilt grouping, which happens automatically. That's fine. Or you can do it again if it is not available by default. I will show it again. When I am bringing my invoice date, Excel is automatically grouping the fields because that's the new feature in Excel, pivot tables. And here you can see row level section. Let me bring it here. So I'm having years, months, and dates. Whatever you don't want, okay, you can take it out. So let's say I am not interested in the deal level information. And I need to expand both of them. So year and month I'm having. If you are having quarters, you can uncheck it or remove it and it will go away. And whatever groupings have happened, it comes as a new field. Like salesman 2 is added because of my grouping. Okay, same way years, months, quarters, they will also be added by default. So these are the two fields I am interested in. Okay, and that's, that is what I am looking for. Now, this is the monthly sales for each month and for both the years. We were looking for year till date. So if I say that in Feb 2022, what is my year till date? So up to Feb, I need to select both the cells. That number is 12.3 million. If someone says, okay, what was the YTD or year to date sales in August 2022? So I need to take all these cells until August and that's 63 million. But then your boss may say that, can you give me for each month? Because how will I select? Okay, and then look at the total or I need a calculator. So can you give me directly for each month, how much was the YTD or year till date sales? Solution is simple. I will bring sales one more time because I don't want to disturb this number. Monthly numbers are more important. Okay, that is also important. Second column, which I have just added, I will right click first and then change the number format and apply that comma formatting so that it is properly readable. But till now, it is both month numbers, both the columns. What I need to do is to make it cumulative total, right click any cell in the second one, show values as and then go for running total in. You need to look for running total in. When I click that, it asks me, okay, do you want to take the running total based on months? That's correct. We will say okay. And now look at the second column. June. Up to this, we need to sum, right? That number is 34.7. It is directly mentioned against that month. You can calculate or you can directly see the YTD for any month in any year. So it is keep on adding 6.1, 6.1. Then these two months, 12 million. Then th these three months, 17.9 million. And like that, at the end of December, it is total 69, which is correct, total of the year. And same thing, restarting again with the next year. So that's how you calculate year till date. Do you want to know how you will calculate it 
using formula okay if i want to write it here equal sum then i will select c6 okay c6 colon again c6 this is what i need to write and this portion i need to freeze using f4 and then i will click drag and drop you can see same numbers are coming problem is when i go further down it doesn't restart it continues so you might have to delete it here and then restart from here and change the formula possible through formula but again why to work so much when it is easily doable through pivot tables automatically okay i will take five more seconds to repeat this so this is how it was same number second field show values as running total in and click okay that's it chat box is open any questions other than repeating okay repeating i have already done how is it going till now we have spent one hour okay anything new weak wise is not possible you will have to write formulas okay shankar can you show the same in percentage uh, possible like you can select uh, running total in percentage but generally it is not meaningful in terms of time okay but yes possible super super excellent okay hema repeating whole thing again will be difficult okay i will just repeat the yttd part or the ear part okay so ear part is nothing but i will do it in a different table okay so i will take a pivot table paste it somewhere here let's say and when i bring invoice date it is automatically grouped if you don't want it and want invoice wise invoice you can right click and ungroup otherwise grouping was already there if it is like this and you want to group right click and click on group and decide the level of groupings year quarter months or days and all those groupings will be generated in your pivot and then you can decide what to keep in your field list so maybe i don't want this i i want months i don't want quarters and then it will be same journey from this point onwards okay this is which version of excel this is office 365 like latest you can say but uh, it it is same it is workable in whatever we have covered till now it is there in every version okay at least i can see it from 2010 onwards all these things are there suraj kumar awesome way of teaching thank you thank you so much okay let's go to next question yes 2010 it is available okay i'm going back to this and too many groupings are there so let's ungroup these things and bring in my data again what i am taking out in which data i am taking out and this is the scenario i will take a copy of this pivot and paste it here so yttd is fine i will uncheck this here anyway it is gone because of grouping okay in that case i can delete this one itself okay so now i want to compare my past year numbers with this year numbers okay and how to compare that let's say i want to compare currently it is april right so let's say i am in this year april i did 8.6 last year i did 5.6 so roughly 3 million i added into the sales okay now my questions will be okay can i get that 3 million okay somewhere 
additional. And currently, this structure is different. Okay, it is difficult to read. 8.6, then I will go up 5.6. Okay, 7.9, then I will go up 5.5. So it is difficult to manage and compare these numbers because they are in vertical way. So what you can do, if you want the numbers for same month but two different years, so years you want to see in two columns. Okay. So it's very simple. Take year and bring it into columns. And that's it. Now it is very easy to compare side by side, right? So 5.6 versus 8.6, 5.6 versus 9.3, 6.1 versus 5.9. So there is a decrease also. Now, whenever we are comparing, we don't want to see the grand total of those two years, right? I'm comparing them. So I don't want to add them. That means maybe I would take the difference if, if needed. So how to sh not show this grand total? I've shown it earlier. We can go into design. Then here grand total. You can switch it off, but I want to keep it at the bottom because that shows me total of the year. So I will say on for columns only. So for columns, it is on, but for rows, it is off. So I have monthly numbers for both the years side by side. And that's very easy to read for. Next question is, can I know how much is the increase or decrease between the two years? 2022 minus 2021. Net value, I want to see how much we have increased or decreased. So equal this cell minus this cell, but no formulas. Whatever I will teach today, at least that will not involve the formulas. Okay, it will be simpler than that. And I saw uh, in the beginning, most of you were scared of formulas. So let's avoid them as much as possible. But that's not what I am saying that, it doesn't mean that you should avoid formulas. Okay, I'm saying that at least with pivot tables, you can minimize the use of formulas. Otherwise, formulas are very, very important and we will learn later why they are important. Okay, so we have monthly and yearly numbers. <clears throat> and to have any ex anything extra, I need my sales one more time into the value section. And the second one, the second one, I want to change it to the difference between the two columns. Okay, difference between the two years. So you can right click any one of them, show values as, and then difference from, and from dot, 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 that means you it, dot, dot, dot is flexible. You can take the difference based on multiple things. Okay, so when I click on this, it says your difference based on month. We don't want to take difference between months. We want to take difference for the same month between multiple years or two years. So when I switch these two years, okay, base item is previous. That's fine. We want to take for this base will be previous here. When I click OK, it shows me this is the difference. Right click number format and comma formatting is important for me to me to read it clearly. I am repeating it again before you say same number, right click any cell of the second field, show values as and then difference from. Change the basis to years and click OK. And then formatting you can apply. So for now to save time, I can go for this simple comma formatting also. OK, so that's my difference. And I can rename it difference or versus last year, something like that. OK, so that's how I will get the growth in terms of values. Now, your boss will not stay here. That's how, that's the nature of bosses, right? They will ask many things. I have gone through it, you are going through it, okay. Now he will say, can I show, can you show me the percentage growth? No, value-wise you have shown me, 
okay in march we have grown by 3.71 million but how much it is with respect to previous year in terms of percentage so that's also easy sales i will bring one more time this one let me name as percentage growth or decrease whatever it is right click show values as same thing is having percentage difference from also percentage difference from and then basis should be years and click ok so now how to read this report properly 6.1 versus 6.4 that's an increase of 271,000 and that is 4.4 percent with respect to the previous year let's look at march 5.6 versus 9.3 that's an increase of 3.7 million and that is 67% with respect to last year, increase of 67%. Okay. And these two columns are empty because the basis was to take the difference from previous. And the first year in the data set is 2021. So there's no previous for these. So that's why they are empty. And you cannot delete them. Pivots don't allow anything to be deleted, but you can always minimize them if needed. This is what you can present to your management. Okay. Chat is on. Now, tell me how much time you will spend in doing these things normally. How are you doing it earlier? Repeat percentage things. Can you repeat once? 30 minutes. Okay, lots of time. Please repeat, please repeat. I missed it. Please mention how to put year into two columns. Take the year which was there in the row section. Okay. Manual through formulas, Tushar. Yes, I used to do it. Okay. Once more. Okay, it is a lot easy now. Great. Great to hear your feedback. Now, let me repeat it quickly. Okay. It will be very fast. I'll paste it here. This is how it was, okay? Now, if you want to compare, bring year side by side, that's much easy. Grand totals were also there, but we went into design section and then we switched off the grand totals by keeping only four columns. Then you need to bring sales a couple of times more so that you can have other variants of the seals. One of the variant, let's call it uh, increase or like delta versus last year. Delta is nothing but difference, right? And second one I will call percentage delta. Okay. So for the delta versus last year, I will right click, show values as and take difference from based on years. For the percentage delta, right click, show values as, and percentage difference from based on again years. And then you, you are just left with the formatting part. So show the numbers properly and hide whichever columns you don't want to show, the blank ones, and that's it. Okay. How to duplicate columns to convert into percentage? Bring it again into the value section. Same field, sales field. It is only one field, but I am bringing it again, dropping it again and again into the value section. And then I'm modifying those additional fields, additional versions of the same field. Okay. Clear? Next. Also, we need break. How long? It is 6.45, right? Can we hide fields? Uh, hide means the columns. Yes, you can hide them also. Minimizing or hiding both are okay. Amit says no break. Okay, so I will keep it okay, 30 seconds break for everyone. Okay, let's keep it one minute. Okay, but I will start immediately after one minute. 
Okay, till then you can ask me questions and I will also have some water break. Carry on with the questions. One minute break only, okay? What was the report layout? Report layout is nothing but changing fields from columns to rows and just changing them, okay? Keeping them in one column or different columns. That was report layout. Till what time is the session? Three hours roughly, okay? Show me the grouping option to group invoice date. So whenever you right click the date, it will be grouped. Whenever you right click this part, you will see group section or ungroup section, whichever way you want to go, that's fine. Difference and year on year growth, I have repeated it twice, so it will be time taking, okay? So just right click and then show values as, and we were using these options, these four options we were using, okay? So focus on that. What is there are missing values in the comparison? What if there are missing values in the comparison? Missing values, I'm not sure why. If there is no month uh, in a particular sales, then it might show division by zero error. If it is in the base year, okay? Otherwise it should not create an issue, okay? So you, know, you can ignore those cells if missing values are there. Do you have classes for lookup? Uh, we will discuss at the end, okay? So we can put these multiple pivots together and make it look like a dashboard. Yes, exactly. That's how you create a dashboard. Okay. That's great, Manjit. Next question. How to remove these errors and make the report uh, look more clean? I need to see exactly what errors, uh, Sneha, then only I will be able to comment. Okay. Pivots are generally not, uh, they, they don't allow to change a lot of things. Okay. So there are limited functionalities in terms of changing. Yes, transformation wise, we can see there are a lot of functionalities. Okay. But changing, we will see. Okay. But next, can we make this in a chart as well? Yes. Wait for it, Kavita. Okay. Sachin, I've joined late. I just wanted to know how do we add particular fields like city and manager? You just drag and drop each and everything, whatever fields you are having into this section or this section or this section, and then that will appear in the report. Okay, next. Rajiv Ranjan, I am not sure uh, about the timing. It, it depends on your date format, but yes, grouping is possible, I guess. Now, let me switch off the chat. Otherwise, you will continue and we will not move further. Let's go for next. So up to seven, we have covered, okay. What was the last order date for each customer? Now, this is an interesting question, okay. Think of your CEO, okay. He's seeing a uh, dip in your sales, company sales, and he's asking, okay, which customers are not buying me or show me the customers who have not bought from me in last month or maybe what was the last purchase date for any customer? So that I can accordingly decide if it is very old, then why he is not ordering, okay? So this question is a little bit tricky. Let's start with a simple, this one, somewhere here. I will bring this out, this one, this one, this one. So we have customer wise sales. Okay, that's simple, right? We have seen salesman wise sales, customer wise sales, two fields only. The question is, I want to know what is the last invoice date? So I can bring invoice date into row section. Automatic groupings are happening. My report looks different. I was focusing on customer. Customer is there. Let me bring customer. Okay, let me remove first year, quarter, months. So I'm having customer and each customer is having these different dates. And then for this particular customer, my last date is 14th, 14th of December, 2022. Okay. But think of it, so many customers are there. And if I go and check like this for each one of them, it will be like very difficult for me to analyze. Okay. Even if I bring it like this, okay. 
again, it is a combination of dates and so many customers. So that will always be very big. If you see here, how many lines? 31,000 lines are there. So nobody can analyze these many lines. So let me take my data out and come back to the top of the report. So first of all, let me figure out who are my top customers because I would like to see these things for them first. Okay. So right click, sort, largest to smallest. So these are my top customers. Okay. Now, before moving ahead, before getting to the exact answer, what you need to understand is these dates are nothing but all numbers. Okay. And I'm not sure how many of you are aware of that, that all the dates are numbers. It is just a visual formatting, which makes us believe that these are dates. But if I click on this comma, they are all numbers. If I click on, let's say, 4th of Jan, that is also a number. Okay. So all the dates are numbers in the backend. Now, if they are numbers, that can help me to bring it into the value section. Okay, because value section is made for numbers. So when I bring invoice date into value section, what it gives is the count of invoice dates. So whenever you bring a non-numeric field into the value section, it counts them. If you bring, let's say, uh, okay, invoice date itself is fine. So what this means is this car four is having 8,444 lines in the data set. Okay, it is counting the dates. But because we are aware that these dates are nothing but numbers, so that means I can right click and summarize these values. I don't want some because summing dates is not going to give any results. Counting is not giving any results. I can go for max. So every date is representing a number. So if I take maximum of those, that means the last date, correct? If it is a number, when I say maximum, it shows me the latest out of those multiple dates for that customer. But it is showing in the form of numbers. So it's just a formatting issue. I can select all the cells. No need to select all actually. We will use the same method. Right click, number format. This is just a gateway to enter to this panel. I can go for date category and maybe I want to go for this one and click OK. And then formatting is changed. So this I can name it as last order date. So what I did is I dragged invoice date into the value section and then I just took summarization method as maximum. And then I formatted it as a date. You can select it and format it from here also. That's fine, short date, let's say short date is fine. Okay, it's the same thing. So now this becomes interesting. So if we start from top, our data is till the end of 2022. So they have just ordered, okay, until the last day. Look at this. This guy or this customer is top 15th customer. He has not ordered for last 25 days. If we go to the next one, Hyper Panda has not ordered since last two and a half months. Okay. And like that, you can go. Jmart has not ordered for last six days. And you can just figure it out. April, Army Coop has not ordered for last eight months or nine months. And then all you need to do is you need to ask that particular salesman, okay, guy, this is your list. You need to focus on your customers and call the customer if he has not ordered like for more than last five days or so. These are your top guys, top customers, okay? If they are not ordering, that means something is wrong. Maybe something from their side or your side, but you need to resolve it. You need to find the reason why they are not ordering. Have they switched to other customers? or other competitors, okay? Or maybe they are having some payment issues. So maybe you can give some promotions to them for the time being, okay? Some credit facility you can give, but you need to resolve that situ situation because you can't afford to lose top 15th or top 16th customer from your 
business. Okay. Let's see your comments. Chat box is open. Please repeat last two steps. So what I did was I just dragged invoice date here into the value section, right click, and then I changed it to max. That's it. And then formatting. Selecting max will always show you the last value. Yes, because these were dates. When I select max out of dates, max of dates is nothing but last date, right? Instead of checking manually, which phase is easier to check since when the customer has not ordered? Okay. So we can create a field in the data set also, but like in this case, we were just focusing on the dates. Okay. Broadly, that will tell. And it should not be done at a, like we can create a calculated field. That's not an issue. But what I'm saying that, uh, let's say you can simply create a simple field. Something like uh, 31st of Jan, let's take 31st of December 2022. Okay. And then here in one of the additional column, you can take this minus this one. Okay. And again, this is coming like this. I can name it as N5. Okay. I need to freeze this portion E3. So 76 days, he has not ordered 25 days. So that can give you more clarity. Okay. We can extend it. I did it by just one simple formula on the outside. Okay. But we can figure out a way by doing it inside the data also. Okay. But uh, let's avoid it because that will involve some formulas again. Now, uh, sort not ordered since last three months. Okay. Sorting is not ordered since last three months. So you just keep remove sales and just uh, use that field and sort it. The number of days which I calculated that you can sort. Okay, so you will see that one. Now, next thing which we will do is <clears throat> create customer by sales for each city. Okay. Now let's change it. Customer wise sales. So this is your, I will remove this last order date or let me copy it in a different pivot. Last order date I'm removing. The question says, in fact, let me have it in a new sheet, totally new sheet. Okay. The question is that I'm having customer by sales. I want this list of customers for each city. Okay. There comes this section, which we have not used till now. There comes this section, which we have not used till now. So what you will do is you will bring city into filters and then you can select for Abu Dhabi. This is the scenario. You can select it for Bangalore. That is that is the list. And like that, I can keep on selecting for different, different cities and I will see that list. Okay. What if you need to distribute it to many people? Okay. So maybe what you will do, you will select a particular city and then copy paste this name and paste it somewhere else. Okay. So one by one, because I don't want to show or give them the full list. Okay. I want directly because maybe my salesmen are not very familiar with pivot tables. So I don't want them to filter and then get the list. Okay. For each city, I want the list of customers with their sales. So I need to have different, different pivot tables. Okay. And in our business, we can see roughly 15 to 16 cities are there. So imagine how much time you will take to generate the same list for 15 or 16 cities. And that list can increase next time. 
tomorrow you can work in 20 cities 50 cities okay now this trick will blow your mind okay i have added city into the filter generally i don't i am not a great fan of this filter section but for this reason i use filters now what i need to do is i will select any cell in the pivot table so that i can see the properties of the pivot i will use this pivot table analyze tab and then here on the left side you have this option button when i go to the drop down you have this show report filter pages and when i click on it it gives me okay this is the filter which you are currently using in your pivot now look at my sheet and focus when i click okay what happens it has created same pivot for each city whether two customers 10 customers 50 customers it has gone through each city and created the same work which you are supposed to do manually by copy pasting within 2 3 seconds that's it how is that so i will delete it from this city until sharjah and we'll show you again one more time and it can be anything think of this i am having this summary okay growth and i want this to be done for each country i will bring okay some columns for the empty okay let's take some simpler one because it is having some blank columns also okay let's take uh, again uh, i will have customer by sales customer type by sales or let's say i am having sales managers and i want that sales manager wants to see his salesmen's how much they are selling and each sales manager wants his salesman in the pivot table so i will keep that sales manager into the filter then only it will work pivot table analyze options and then show report filter pages whatever field you select here based on that it will create new sheet for each value of that field each name of the manager okay and when i click okay all the sales managers are listed here with their respective sales managers and their sales so he can control his team he can have a review meeting with all those salesmen and continue doing his job in a better way rather than spending hours to have this first and then comes the analysis of the review okay so that time can be totally saved how to delete sheets in one row so problem is not the deletion problem is the selection okay so i have selected first sheet then shift key is pressed and then i have selected last sheet and in continuity all of them are selected then right click any one of them and then click on delete and they will be deleted okay yes sachin i have already repeated it great uh jay uh, what was your query which is not yet answered can you repeat it once more okay mahesh no i have already repeated okay so it's not very complex add the filter and then go to pivot table analyze options show report filter pages and then click okay select the filter based on which you want to create multiple sheets and then click okay okay guys let's move to the next one so create customer wise sales for each city we have done how many customers are there in each country how many customers are there in each country so again let's take a simple one i will copy the pivot from here 
Okay, so we have total sales by country. But I want to know in India, this 76 million is coming from how many people, how many customers? Okay, so how to bring the number of customers? Most of you will be thinking customer. And when I bring it into value section, that's the number of customers. No, that's not the number of customers. That's number of lines which India is having in the total data set. Okay, do you want to see this? So you can double click on any number in the pivot table and it gives you detail behind that number. Let's see for India. So it generates a data set from your main data set. And if you count these lines, you see 36,003. 36,002, one line was header. Okay, so that is not getting counted. So it is the number of lines, which is there. I will read this one first. Okay, so this is not what we were looking for. We were looking how many customers are there, 10, 15, 50, how many customers are there? Okay, so we don't want to count them again and again because these customers are ordering again and again. And here it is getting counted every time. So what we need to do is we cannot do it like that. Okay. You need to start creating your pivot in a different way. Okay. For this particular aspect. So when we were here in the data set, we go to insert and then we go for pivot table. Table one, that's fine. New worksheet or existing worksheet. Let's go for existing worksheet. Okay. And I will select, where was I working? I was working here, okay. I will select maybe this place. Now, this much is fine. We have seen this earlier also. The change which you need to make in your report creation or pivot creation process is, you need to check this option. Add this data to data model. And data model is a background environment. Uh, if you have heard of pivot tables or power pivots, okay, power pivot is related to data model. So you need to just check this option and then you will see new pivot. For the first time when you are using it, it might take a little bit of time. You can see it is loading the data model. And now it is loaded. A simple pivot table is created, which is similar to the other pivot tables. So we use in so sales. I'm bringing it here customer wise, not customer. I was looking for country. That number is same. Okay. I can sort it largest to smallest. So it is exactly the same number. Now I'm bringing my customers into this, which is also giving me same count, repetitive count. Okay. Now, something which was not possible here, and that's possible here. Let me show you what is that thing. Customer I am bringing into old pivot also. This is the traditional pivot. And this is the new pivot, which I just added through data model. Okay. I can right click it. And let me see if I can change the summarization method. Some doesn't work with text fields. Count, average, max, they are all not working. There is an option of distinct count. Distinct count means it will not be counted next time if it is repeating. Okay. So this is disabled, but if I try this in the new pivot, that distinct count is active. That distinct count is active if I add my data set to the data model. Okay. So if I switch to distinct count rather than count, then it gives me the total number of customers based on country or whatever is there in the pivot. So for India, it is total of 56 customer. For UAE, it is total of 52 customer. And total unique customer in the business is 120. Okay. Total unique customers is 120. So what was the change which I did? Okay. Because this cannot be done in normal pivots. Okay. So when I was creating a pivot, I just ticked this option. And then that distinct count option was available to me. Okay. Rest of the things are like normal rewards.
Okay. Everyone clear about the number of customers? Chat is open. Let's say you want to know how many salesmen are there in each country. I can bring same way the salesman column and then I can right click show values as not sorry summarize values by distant count and then it gives me total number of customers total number of salesmen and I can rename this uh, number of customers number of salesmen and that makes my pivot table more meaningful. Is it advisable to add data to data model for normal pivots too? Yeah, most of the time it is the same. The data model will give you more uh, like flexibilities. Only thing is some features may not be applicable in the data model pivots, like your filtering. The filtering trick which I just showed, country wise country for each sheet, okay? That will not work in the new model, okay? But uh, otherwise, most of the things are there, okay? You can try. Some of the things may not be possible, but most of the things will be possible. And there will be many other things which will be possible, okay? How to delete sheets in one go? Select using control key and shift key and then delete, okay? To know the unique count, we should always use data model. Yes, that's one of the best and easy way, but you can always go for formulas and many other things. Okay, but this is the easiest way. Next. Can you please explain data model? There's, there was nothing to explain. When we are inserting a pivot, you just need to tick data model option. That's it. The rest of the process of pivot is same. Can we do it in the beginning itself to enable distinct? Yes, you can do it unless you have that uh, filter trick which you want to use that doesn't work in that. Okay. Clear, clear, clear. Okay, great. Now, let me show you some more things. No, uh, no Sanket, uh, data model is not only for distinct count, it has many more things we will see now. Power pivot, if you have heard, power pivot works, works totally on the data model, okay? So that would be must for power pivots, okay? And there are many other benefits. So distinct count is one thing which I have shown you, which you can immediately use without any like uh, requirement uh, or any prior understanding of the power pivot sets, okay? And this data model thing will be applicable only from 2013 version, okay? Excel 2013 or newer versions. Before that, it is not there. Now, <clears throat> I will come here. Let me delete these things. We have seen that sales manager was there in the filters. And when I select any one salesman, it shows the change on the pivot. But this is not a very user-friendly way of like changing the report. If I share this report to a very senior management level people, then they would not like to go into the filtering and then change things. Okay, something like I, I have the sales manager, but I also have customer type and I want Maybe for a particular sales manager like Kapil, his salesman or customers, and then I am only interested in the supermarket type. So these are the four people. So that takes a lot of time, right? And as we go in the upper management, they would not like to do these things. So I will undo that. What is the better way? The better way is known as slicers. So slicers are nothing but filters, but you can say modern filters, easy to use filters. So I'm having this customer wise sales, okay? And I want to have each manager visibility of its customers, okay? Not in different, different places, one pivot is fine, but rather than filters, what is the better? So I can go for, let's say, let's start with country first. I can go for country, right here in the field list, and then there is an option of slicer and I get, this panel, 
it is having so country i added so country will show me unique list of items in the country field and to filter it's very easy just click the button and that's it so think of it for the senior management it is much more intuitive and easy to use okay and that's why i love slicers more than filters when it comes to the reporting okay okay now what if you want to filter it based on multiple things one is country maybe i want to add the customer type also so no problem be inside the pivot right click and click on customer type now we have two so let's say i want to go for india and i want to see hotels in india so that's india these are the customers of india hotels this is the list of customers from india and hotels okay so that is slicers slicers are nothing but user friendly filters and how to create them right click and add as slicer if you are having our uh, 2010 okay or earlier versions of excel or let's say not this forget earlier versions what if you want to create country slicer city slicer customer type slicer okay all these three slicers you want so one by one you will right click right so there is a better way when you have to create multiple slicers be inside this pivot pivot table analyze and here insert slicer this shows you all the fields which are there in the pivot Cust we wanted customer uh, sorry country city maybe customer type and click okay all the three slicers are ready in one go what i did pivot pivot table analyze insert slicers and check the fields based on which you want to create the slicers let me cancel it now how do they work we have seen it earlier so when i click on let's say india do you see the indian cities are selected in a darker shade or it is shown in a darker color and remaining ones are there in a lighter shade that means they are not related or the data is not applicable for india and the other cities which is true right let's go for something some small country like bahrain so you can see bahrain is having only this city and bahrain sells to only supermarket kind of customers so these are not applicable because these are in lighter shade so your pivot shows the intersection of what you have selected on different different slices ua dubai hypermarkets only one person is there or one customer is there i think these were salesmen right okay yeah these are salesmen so one salesman is there so that's how we use slicers now some of you may think that whenever i select india it shows me india but when i select bahrain it shows me only bahrain what if i want to select multiple countries or cities so that's possible using control key you can select bahrain kuwait oman this is the list of all three or you can click one and then left click and drag it down so continuous items can also be selected using the mouse itself okay in the newer versions of excel from 2016 onwards you will see this icon also in the slicers so if you activate this now your normal clicks also will be remembered okay let's say i selected india and then i activate this i want to select maybe two more countries oman ua so that's how i can select them without using control key or the shift key okay and if you don't want it you can click it again clear the filters and that's it look at the city slicer city slicer is having too many values okay and we need to use scroll bar to see all of them so how to make it better for the viewers you can click on the header when you select the slicer slicer related properties are enabled in the ribbon when we click that here currently the values are shown in one column i can switch that into two columns and maybe a little bit of height i will increase and that solves my problem of scroll bar 
Okay. So that's all about slicers. Now I will show you one more thing which is similar to slicers and that is known as timeline. So city wise we are able to filter, country wise we are able to filter, but we might need to filter it based on time also. Okay. So when you right click invoice date kind of fields, the fields which are date time, okay. When you right click, you have two options. One is adding as slicer and that gives me each date. So there will be two years data. So, so roughly 730 or 731 dates will be there and it will be very difficult for me to select them, right? Out of those 730 dates. So that's not a better way. The better way is I will right click and go for timeline. And it gives me something like this. Let me increase it. So it summarizes the dates into years, quarters, months, and whatnot. We have seen the groupings earlier also. We can select 2022. So yearly we can summarize. Maybe I want to go for 2022. Then inside that, I want to go for quarters. I'm interested in quarter two of 2022 because currently we are in quarter two. And then maybe months. We are focusing only on April. We are, that's the current month. Okay, let's assume that. And then you can also go to the day level also. So maybe I will select from day one till not 30, but today is 23rd. So I will select it up to here. This is the data for 2022, April, only 23 days. Okay, so it is exactly like a slicer. But this option is enabled only for date related fields. Otherwise, the usability is as good as slicers. And you will be able to switch your groupings, which one you want to go for in terms of selecting it. So you start with years, quarters, months, whatever you want to see, you can go with that. So that's about slicers and timelines. Any questions till now on this filtering section? Yeah. Very good. So these are very easy. It is same as filtering, but easy to use filters for all kind of users. Okay. Thanks, Pankaj. Okay. Now we will discuss a little bit about the dashboards. Okay. The process of making a dashboard. I will not go into the details of making a dashboard. Okay. But the steps. Okay. How you can create the dashboards. Can we keep oh, pivot tables outside? Is yeah, they are outside is pivot tables only. Okay. Okay. Now, what we need to do is let me delete these things for now, and I'm having a simple. Customer type sales. Okay. So let's say this is one report which my manager is interested in. And there's one more report where I am showing uh, city wise sales. Okay. So these are the two reports which I am interested in. And I'm giving it to my manager. Now manager says, okay, can I have country slicer so that I, I can interact with it? Okay, we will come to that. But can I make it more visually? So what is a dashboard? Dashboard is having some visual elements so that it is easy to understand. And these are the two insights which we are looking for in our dashboard. So how to make it more visual? So you can click inside the pivot. Now it depends on your version where you will find the pivot charts. But if it is older version, you will find it somewhere in the pivot table analyze section or options somewhere here. If it is the latest version, then you can find it in the insert and then you will see pivot chart. Wherever you can find pivot chart, click on that. So I want to convert this insight in chart format. 
So pivot chart is nothing but a chart based on a pivot. And let's say I want to go for this pie chart. Because this chart is showing me how much sales are coming from what customer type. That's a simple insight which is there. Okay. And then you can format the chart as per your need. I'm not going into that. Okay. I will send you a video which is showing you step by step this process of creating the dashboard. Okay. That was committed earlier from us and we will send it to you. So, but understand the broader process, what happens. So from data, you are having your pivots. From pivots, you are having a chart. Let's create a chart for this also. So this is a list of bigger, like more number of cities. So let me go for a pivot chart. And then let's go for bar chart. Or maybe column chart is also fine. <clears throat> I will keep it somewhere here. And let me add the data labels. Okay, data labels I will not bring because apparently it is not formatted. So it is fine like that. Okay, now comes, uh, so these two insights are there in the text and number format as well as the visual format. Maybe when visual is there, I'm not interested in this. So I can put it like this. Or maybe I can keep these things on a different sheet. Okay, like this, I can take this control key, select second one also, control X, and then I can paste it in a new worksheet. So these things I was interested in. Okay, why would you have duplicate information, right? Numbers were there, chart is there. I would look at the charts only. Now, because these are pivot based charts, so when you click on it, you have the pivot table. That means you can right click and create a slicer also. Empty slicer. Okay. When I click UAE, it is showing change here. India, Bahrain. But it is not showing any change on the city wise chart. Okay. Because you created the slicer from this chart. So, what you need to do, you need to select the slicer, go to slicer settings, and here there is an option of report connections. You, you created this slicer from this chart. You need to connect it with this one also. So report connections, and here, now there is a problem. Do you remember? Initially, we said that we can rename tables, pivot tables, but we forgot to that, do that. Ideally, every pivot table which you are creating, that should have a unique name so that you can recall by name itself what is it which we are looking at, okay? No problem. My pivot, second pivot is in sheet five. So that's the pivot and I click OK. Now, when I click on India, you can see this is also changing. Let me zoom out a little bit. UA. So both of them are changing. And that's how you create a dashboard. So what is the process? Process is you were having a data. From data, you created some pivots, some insights, some summaries. From pivots, you created pivot chart. You kept them on a separate place on in the same sheet. That's fine. Then you created some slicers. And then you connect slicers with the respective pivot tables, okay, which you want to control using that slicer. And you can have multiple slicers, not only one, you can create multiple slicers and you can connect all of them with multiple pivot tables or pivot charts. And then formatting and making it beautiful, that's separate things, smaller issues, pretty issues. So I will send you a video which shows you how to create from data till the dashboard, everything is there. Don't worry about that. And that's why I want to stop it here. Any questions till now? Let's see the chat.
Can you repeat the chart? I will send you the video. You can have a look at that. Okay, everyone will get that video. How to add percentage in the country data? Again, guys, we have moved far, far ahead from the percentage thing. Thank you, sir. I learned a lot. Can we copy paste same in the PPT? PPT you can paste, but then interactivity you might lose. That's the only concern, otherwise it's fine. Okay. What else? Great. Now let's come to the last section where we can find slicer and timeline option. Ashish, then I think you were not focusing on the screen. We have discussed slicers for maybe last 15 minutes at least, and I have created multiple slicers, and still you're asking this question. That means you need to pay more attention. Okay, one more time. Any pivot is there. You can see the field list, right click that, and then add a slicer. If you right click a date, then you will see both the options. If the chart is created from a pivot, that means it is a pivot chart. Right click, same things will appear there also. Okay. So I want you to be more attentive. Then uh, I will, I would need to repeat it less number of times. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next section now. Switch off the chat. Now coming next section is we want to see pivot tables, but not simple pivot tables. I want you to understand the power pivots a little bit. So at least have, let us understand them uh, as per like just on introduction basis, how they can help you. So I will close this sheet. All of you can close and save. And I will open file 81. Excuse me, file 81. And that has some data set, which is actually the same data set, but in a different way. So I'm again having a sales sheet and it is named as sales. It is already converted into a table. But my data set is like this, where I'm having only volume, volume of like number of bottles sold, what product, which customer, and which route, route can be referred to a subsection of a city. Okay. And then invoice number and invoice data. But if I create my pivot by using this data, then nobody will understand my pivot my report because customer name is not there, salesman is not there, country is not there, product name is not there. So nobody will remember it. It's like your employee names and employee codes. Your employee codes, nobody understand. Maybe one or two people will understand. But your name, many people understand. Okay, so you need to bring names of all the, these things in this place. And how do you do that? You will use these sheets product code is there, then I can get all these things. And what is that function which you will use to bring all this here? Your favorite VLOOKUP, correct? Or index match or XLOOKUP. So I am having customer master, I am having my sales team master, which is based on roots, and that can give me all these details. So few columns here, few columns here, few columns here, roughly 10 to 15 VLOOKUPs we need to do, right? 10 to 15 will cups you need to write based on these three fields. And then you will get all the details here in the form of names or descriptions. Now, what if I tell you, you don't need to do that. Okay. You don't need to do that because the way which I am showing you now, it doesn't require will come. Okay. And it will be much simpler than what you were thinking. In fact, these four sheets are currently there in like one single file. Even if they were placed in four different files, then also I can create a pivot. Okay, so let's look into that. So first of all, for this, you need power pivot. Now, it depends on your Excel license, whether you have power pivots or not. Okay, you need to pay a little bit extra to have power pivots. You can see here, I'm having a tab known as power pivot. Or in the data tab, I'm having some green icon, manage data model. How to enable this tab, Power Pivot? You can, it is a one-time exercise. You can go to File, then Options, then Add-ins. And here, if you see Power Pivot in this list, it means that 
it is there in your Excel version. And most of the people are having it if it is provided by company. For personal laptops, it may not be there. Okay, because it depends on your purchase. So if it is there, how to activate it? You need to go to manage and click on com add-ins. And then click on go. And then you need to check Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel. And then it will be enabled here. I will repeat it once more. File, options, add-ins, com add-ins, and then check Power Pivot if it is visible in the list. Otherwise, you can't do anything. Now, considering that it is there in your Excel, now how to make use of it? So all you need to do is you need to be there in this table. Okay. For this, all your data sets needs to be tables. Okay. You remember we inserted table the first step, first step itself. Okay. So this is sales table. Next one is product table. Third one is customer table. And fourth one is sales table. These are the names in the table. How to Take this data set and put it in Power Pivot environment or the data model. You just need to click on Power Pivot. And here there is an option, add to data model. When I do that, it will open one more window and then it will add that data set to that window. Let me make it bigger. So you can see same data set and here sheet name or the table name is picked automatically. So it is having all the rows of that sheet, that table. Okay, this is fine. Let me go to product and let's have product also. Add to data model. So earlier there was one sheet only. Now there are two sheets. On the bottom left corner, you can see sales and then product table. I will minimize this and do the same thing for customers. So add to make data model. Customers is also added. And let's do it for the last one also. Sales team add to data model. So that means whatever data was available in my normal sheets as tables, I have added it to the data model. And this is the same addition which we did as a checkbox in one of the older pivot tables when we wanted to use distinct count. Okay. So this is the environment of data model. All the four sheets are there. Now, how to make use of it? Because these data sets were there with us earlier also. So for that, do you see an option of pivot table here? You can click on this pivot and then it will ask where to create. Let's go for new sheet. This is same as normal pivot table. We have seen it earlier. Field list is not visible. No problem. I will enable it. Okay, let me make it bigger. So what is the difference between normal pivots and power pivots? So here I am able to see my all data sets and each table is having their respective fields. That was not the case in normal pivots. Normal pivots want you to work first, bring all the data sets using VLOOKUP, INDEX, MATCH, whatever you are doing, if function, whatever logic is there, you need to bring them into one single table, one single place, and then pivot works. Here we have not done that. Let's try to create country-wise sales. So in the sales, we have quantity. The total quantities are this much. Then I will go for country. Let's find country from sales team table. And that's country. This is how we were using, right? But the problem is pivot is showing same number for each country. That means something is wrong. Okay. Now let's fix that wrong, wrong thing. So what it says is relationship between table may be needed. So we have used two different tables and they don't know each other. So that's why this is the scenario. Same number is replicated for each country. 
If they know each other, they have more visibility and then the sales will be properly allocated. So how to make them know each other? Okay. You need to go to Power Pivot window. That's the tabular view of all the four sheets. Next icon is diagram view. All the four tables and their fields are shown here. Okay. Let me keep it here. So these four tables are there. And this is the same central table, which is having my actual data. Now I was creating something country and quantity, and it was not working. Now think of it. If you were doing VLOOKUP between these two tables, this and this, what would be your common field? Okay, for VLOOKUP, you need to have something common on both the places, right? Excuse me. So that was root and root. Something needs to be common between the two places, then only we look up works. Same thing here. Root is common between the two places. So let me take this root, left click and drag and drop it on the other table, same field. And this line is created. Okay. Whenever you drop it on that field, always hover that line. It shows you what fields are connected because by mistake, you might drop it on the upper field or lower field when it is like very small. So once this line is done, let me minimize it. Look at this. Your VLOOKUP issue is done. So if you were doing VLOOKUP manually, you were supposed to do five, six times, at least for this table, this one single line is doing all that work. Now, currently we have used country, but we can remove country, we can bring city. That is also working. We can bring salesman. That is also working. So we can use anything out of this table or anything out of this table. And we can create any reports from those two tables. Now, let me repeat it because it is new for many of you. So how to do it? Let's do for something else. I'm having quantity. And let's say I want to know sales by my customer type. Problem is same. Number repeating means no connection, no visibility. I don't know you, you don't know me. Okay. Then I will go back to my data model. This table and this table we are currently using. What is common between them? Customer code, customer code. And here name is not important. Okay. The content inside those names. We look up doesn't care about column names, right? We look up looks for the values. If they are not matching, then you get hash and errors. Same thing here. The values are more important, not the column names. So this customer code, I will drop it on this customer code. And then when I minimize it, my report is fixed. Now I can use customer type as well as customer name. Both will give me correct data. Okay. Customer type, correct data. Let's try it with one last table and that's product. Subcategory wise sales, I want to see. And under, under that, I want to see my product names also. Product name, let's bring product. Okay. Sorry, product name. Let us see how to fix it. So what is common between this and this? Product code is here. There is no product code here. But what I said, the values inside the columns are important. Let's look at the data view. So in the product code, product table, we have the product code, but it is named as product. So that's fine with us. We'll go back to the diagram view. Product, I will draw common product. Okay. And now, sorry. Sheet one. And that's how my report is fixed. Rest of the things as we do in normal keywords, you can go to number format, you can bring comma formatting so that it appears in a proper way. You can right click, you have show values as all the features are visible to you, whatever you were using earlier. It is just a better way 
or like it is just a more powerful way of dealing with pivots. Okay. Another thing is that uh, power pivots can connect to different different data sets. It is not necessary that your data needs to be there in the Excel sheet. They can get data from CSV files, text files. Okay. So here, if you see in the Power Pivot window, sorry, you can go inside the main window. You can connect from a database, SQL Server access file. You can use other sources and so many databases are listed here. Let's say you want to connect to one other Excel file. So you can select Excel file or text file and then it will ask you to locate that file and that's it. It will import data like this. When it is inside the same file, then you just need to click this option, uh, add to data model. Otherwise, start from the other window from which kind of data source and select that particular source. So this will reduce all your problems related to VLOOKUPS. Now look at this, with these four tables or three lines, we have actually avoided 10 to 15 VLOOKUPS. How much time, how many errors were there in that? Correct? Questions on power pivots. So first of all, power pivots are not available in every version. You need to see whether your license is having it or not. Okay. Can we use power pivots in Google Sheets? Mostly no. Okay. Google Sheets are totally different creatures. And Power Pivot and all, they will not work on Mac also. Mac also. Windows version, mostly it will work. So can I just show the, can just show the first steps, which I missed. What is, what was first step? I don't know. Whether you conduct separate classes for Power Pivots, yes, we do. Okay. We will discuss those after some time. Okay. Now, are all four sheets connected? Yes, these are connected. Okay. Like where to connect Power Pivot and all, we have shown it already, okay. Next. How did you link data with Power Pivot? So I clicked inside the table and then I clicked on add to data model and then it went into the Power Pivot. Next, next, next questions. Step before this. I don't know. Uh, Mohan, I am not able to understand which step. Please show Power Pivot for different sheets. It will be same. Let's say I want to, I just, I will just import, show you how to import the data. Okay. Let's say I want to import file which was already there in our folder, right? This file itself I want to import. Or let's say this file I want to import. Okay. So I'll show you that from other sources. It is a different file. Okay. It is not in this file. Excel file. Next. It is asking you where is that file. So I will go to browse. It is there in my desktop. You would table practice files and it was 71 Jan 2023. Open. Use first row as headers. That's the case most of the time. And then check connections. If that's working or not. Connection is succeeded. It is not optional. No, like it is not mandatory to click on test connections. Then next, it will show you the sheets within that particular file. This is the first one which I want. Friendly name is this. If you want, you can change this name. Okay. And then click on finish. It will import each, each row from that file into this. 3000 rows are there. Close. And that's the data set. Now, if you remember this, this is more toward our first file. Okay, another month from the initial structure which we were having. Okay, so that's how you can, so all these four tables or five tables could have come from different, different Excel files or different, like some of them from Excel, some of them from uh, CSV files or text files or databases. Okay, it can be a mix of data sources. And that's make it more powerful. Another thing about Power Pivot is your normal pivot, because it is linked to a sheet, 
the sheet capability is only 1 million rows. What if your data is more than that? This doesn't care. It can connect to the database directly and database can have more number of rows and it will accommodate that also. Theoretically, it can accommodate like 2000 million rows. Okay. Can we put live data from a website to power pivot? Uh, yes and no, uh, but yes, you need to understand a lot of things behind that. If you don't have the add-ins, how do we get it on? I am on Office 365. If you are on Office 365, uh, Office 365 E3 version is having this uh, power pivot to uh, like what we call licensing. E3 license, if you have, you will have power pivot. You just need to activate it. Okay. What next? Okay, great. So we have learned a lot of things. Let's see what other things are there in Excel. Pivot tables are actually done. Okay. So let's see, because pivot tables will not be only things which you need to master Excel. Okay. You have just seen like, I think maybe 90% of you were new to power pivots. Okay. So I will close all these files and let's move back to our PowerPoint. Okay. And see uh, where, just a minute. Okay. So we have said, we have seen a lot of things which saved a lot of time, okay, in terms of pivots itself. Now, what if I tell you a few more things which can save you a lot more time? Okay, what are the three steps to save time? Why we are focusing on saving time? Because time is money. If you save time, you can get more things done, okay? That means you are more valuable to the company and that means you can earn more. That's simple, okay? Time is the key thing. Everyone is having eight hours, theoretically, but you work 10 hours, 12 hours, okay? Now you just need to make yourself more efficient or productive in that same time. And that's how you are changing your value with respect to the other colleague of yours. So how can you save time? First is keyboard shortcuts. We have not seen shortcuts in this workshop because it was not focusing on that. But if you remember, control T is for tables. Some of you mentioned for pivot tables also. Okay, or 10 B or something like that. All these things will save you. Maybe if, if you can do it using mouse in five seconds with the shortcut, you will be able to do it using in one second or two seconds. So you will save 60 to 80 percent time using the shortcuts. That time is not a very big time, or it is not having a lot of weightage in terms of total work which you do in Excel. But whatever that step is, in that step, you save 60 to 80 percent of the time. Okay, so these are important things. And the shortcuts can be of all these different types. Now, second thing, do you remember that before starting pivot tables, we created tables and that saved our time. Next time, I don't need to work on any of the report which we created. I just need to paste my data at the bottom of my data sheet, refresh, and that's it. That's the only work which I need to do, okay? Now, how was it possible? Using tables. So like this, there are name ranges, pivot tables we have seen, and then formulas and functions. These things will help you to automate your work. Now, some of you or many of you said that formulas, like you find them tough to learn, okay? It's fine. You just need to start it, okay? And if you understand the concept, how it is written, then it's very easy. Now, why formulas are important? Now, think of it, let's say you have a text and you need to split it into two, three columns. Many of you may be using text to columns to split that, but text to columns is a manual step. If your data cell, if your any cell changes, you need to repeat the same text to column process again once the data changes. But if you do the same splitting using formulas, it will be always automatic. It will be always active. So that's the difference between formulas and the normal shortcuts. Normal shortcuts means uh, doing the same work using some other tricks. Okay, so that's 
formulas, pivot tables, and images. They will save you roughly 60% of your working journey when you are dealing with data set. Okay. Now, then comes you spend a lot of time while analyzing, or maybe your manager. Okay. So if you give your report in the form of charts, okay, or if you highlight something with colors, okay, or if you give it in the form of a dashboard, which is interactive, it makes his life very easy. Okay. To understand the report, he will take much less time. Maybe when you gave a normal tabular report, which we created on the first sheet, two tables, customer type by sales and the product by sales. Okay. Now, if you give the dashboard or the visual report, he will maybe one or two minutes are needed to consume the same report. Okay. So that's why visualizations are very important from the end consumer perspective and user perspective. So these three steps, shortcuts, tables, pivot tables, and formulas, they will help you to automate a lot of background work. And then the representation side, you need to put it in the uh, visual form and that will help you to save a lot of time. All these, all these three steps combined together can save you 80 to 90% of the time which you are currently doing the same work, okay? Now, if we, as I explained earlier, once you cover all these things, what happens? You will become an expert, your, your productivity will increase, right? And then you will get more things done for your managers or your management or your company. Then they see a better value out of yours. Earlier, if they were saying, let's say, they were paying 50,000 per month, okay? In the same 50,000, they are getting better value. And once you start delivering better value, okay, they will recognize you. And then you can ask, why not 50? I can do the work of 50 plus 52 people within maybe same time. So why don't you give me some portion of the other person's salary, okay? That's how you will be able to command that additional money or earnings, okay? But first you need to demonstrate what you're capable of. And this step is more important then only these things will happen. Now, so far what we have learned in pivot tables, all these things, pivot features, analysis, interactivity, pivot charts, power pivots, all these things we have covered in details multiple times. I have repeated many things, okay? But that's not the end to learn Excel. That's not the only thing which you will need to do work with Excel and data sets, okay? So pivots we discussed just now, okay? And then we have so many things remaining. Formatting, how to represent numbers, how to represent text and dates, okay? Formulas, one of the major things to automate your work. Conditional formatting charts, okay? They will help you to visualize the same output so that you can consume less time in analyzing it. And then comes shortcuts and the dashboard is nothing but an output of all these things, all these things together. So if you are currently doing eight to 10 hours of work, it is possible to complete it within one hour. Forget one hour, one hour should not be your goal. What I am saying that if you spend 30 minutes every day to learn these concepts, you will be able to save at least two hours every day. Whatever time you are spending, okay, if you are spending eight hours, you will be able to do it in six hours, okay? And next month, that time will further increase saving time, okay? So now you understand that what is the importance of Excel. And today you have seen through pivot tables how many things you were doing in a traditional way and how much time you can save by doing it differently. Okay. Some of the things maybe you were aware about, but many things were new for you, including the different pages based on the filters, timelines, power pivots, show as percentage, and many other things. Okay. And you also realize that. Every day, every company is dealing with some data set, okay? So you need to be more efficient because data is increasing day by day, okay? And ultimately, your productivity or your efficiency is linked to how much money you will earn in the long run, okay? So all these things are important and after understanding these things, okay, what we have, <clears throat> how you can achieve these things, okay? So once you become master of all these things, you will be able to automate your stuff. 
you can try to make a career shift if you currently you are in different domain but you want to go more toward data set because that is the growing field okay more and more jobs are getting generated in the data side and if you want to earn more all the things are possible okay now <clears throat> how we can help you to make it possible okay how we can help you in making this possible so we have a course 